Hello everybody, Jazz Shepherd here. My name is Dan. Uh, welcome to my series on jazz from 1955-56 and the great jazz labels. Today I'm going to talk about Roost Records out of New York. It was founded by Terry Reig, who had worked with Savoy in the 40s on a lot of their classic recordings. And he formed Roost in New York in 1950. And right off the bat, he's got these 10 inches, Dizzy Gillespie, Johnny Smith, the great guitar player, Stan Getz, um, just some real solid artists to help launch his new little enterprise. Uh, T Teddy Reed was a giant of a man. Again, he was a Jew in jazz. They say he was 300 pounds, six foot tall, giant of a promoter. David Ritz wrote. Raised amongst the thieves and the geniuses in jazz, which I'm sure jazz has plenty of both. Uh, Roost was a cool little label. It wasn't around super long. You know, there's the 10-inch era, 50 to 55, and then they go into 12-inch in 55, 56, and uh, they issue, reissue some of that 10-inch LP stuff, obviously, like most labels do. And then Roulette ended up buying them probably about 1960, I think. And some of the artists changed, but I feel Roulette feels pretty different from Roost. Uh, Roost has some really classic early Stan Getz recordings from the early 50s into the mid 50s. There's a ton of Sonny Stitt records. I've not heard a bad Sonny Stitt on Roost, and there's probably 13 of them. There's only about 60 albums on Roost in the 12 inch format in the 2200 series. And there's, of course, probably 50 of the Roost 10-inch LP series. And there's going to be some crossover there. And then the other giant on Roost is the guitar player, Johnny Smith, who I'm playing right now. He's probably got over two dozen records on Roost. So a lot of the Roost catalog is going to be Johnny Smith. He's one of the great unheralded guitar players in jazz. You can get Johnny Smith records for a steal. They're always great. Morning cup of coffee and some marmalade on toast. Put some Johnny Smith on in the background, and you're doing it. See what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to run through a few quick things here. Charlie Parker, who of course worked with Savoy and Reed back in the 40s. This is some early Roost recordings of him. Early Stan Getz. Classic stuff. Early Sonny Stitt. The smoke, one of those smoky album covers. Classic stuff. Uh, great Beverly Kenny. She's one of the singers in jazz that's kind of a little under un unheralded, but uh, this album in particular is fantastic. She has three on Roost, I believe. The great Selden Powell. He's one of those horn players people kind of miss. He slips through the cracks. <clears throat> He's a sideman on a lot of great recordings in the 50s and 60s. <clears throat> Both of his sessions on Roost are great, hard bop, uh, black expressionist music from this era. Another Sonny Stitt. This is plays the arrangements of Quincy Jones. This is 2204, so this is the fourth release from 55. And so in 55, Quincy Jones is fairly recent on the scene, and Sonny Stitt is already doing his arrangements. That's how fresh uh, Quincy Jones came across to people. Here's the other Selden Powell LP on Roost. Real solid stuff. More Stitt, great album covers. They have a pretty solid art department. I don't think their fonts are anything legendary, but their photos are nice. Some of the art concepts are nice. Here's a Bud Powell session, which I think is a little earlier from recording, but here it is being presented again. Uh, Johnny Smith with Stan Getz, Moonlight in Vermont. Uh, the Sound, Stan Getz, that's a really great Stan Getz record from 54 or so, 55. More Stitt. Stan Getz, the Storyville Volume 2. Another Sonny Stitt record with the New Yorkers. This has Shadow Wilson, Wendell Marshall, and Hank Jones. So being in, in New York label, that's one of the real benefits of being in one of these labels from New York, is you have access to this incredible cache of sidemen. And even though you might not be able to sign them all as your artists, you can almost always get guys to come in and do side work. And New York is just this cornucopia of jazz players in, in the 50s you had to be there to be to make it you know and even other labels are recording in new york that are based in chicago and la because 
who you could bring into the studio for a session in New York is pretty unrivaled. <clears throat> so as I said earlier, Roost is gone by 1960 and bought up by Roulette. And Roulette does keep some of the stuff available and in print. But Roulette seems to slip into a Count Basie label pretty quickly where they're issuing kind of those swing. And uh, Teddy Reek sticks around. I think he ends up at Verve doing some sessions there. But uh, old Roost records from the 50s. There's only 60 of them. A lot of them are very affordable with the exception of the Beverly Kenny and the, the Selden Powell records. A lot of these records will go for between five and 20 bucks. And you can't beat an old jazz record for $14. You can't get a good cup of coffee and a sandwich for that anymore. So old Roost records, great stuff. Buy it. You gotta love New York City. It's the greatest city in the world. In fact, it might be the greatest city in history. That's up for Ramsey's and Hammurabi to, to decide, not me. Stay tuned. we got more great stuff coming in part 10. We're going to cover the Dawn label, and then we're going to get right back at it and do Jubilee and kind of wrap up this New York scene. And then we're going to move it to Chicago. So stay tuned, guys. I'm the Jazz Shepherd. Peace.